Before I start, very quickly, we will talk about auto batching graph request in SharePoint framework solution. Very quickly about me, I am Marcin. Here are my socials. I'm from Poland. The question I believe you all want to ask, why even implement auto batching? Uh, and very quickly, Graph API has amazing ability to batch requests, which is great because you want to communicate with any server as little as possible. So if you can batch multiple requests into one, you're actually doing things faster. Amazing. Um, another point for auto batching, this is effectively data access layer. So the optimal implementation, at least for me, would actually not expose any of the implementation details about the batching, but do it under the hood. And very quickly for the real world example, let's consider user card. If you want to render a simple user card, you have first of all, call graph to get user info, for example, slash the endpoint. Then you need to get photo, and then you need to get the presence info for this card to be beautifully rendered. So those are three requests that actually can run in parallel. We can batch them, to, batch them together and send only once. Great. How would we do it? First of all, we will define an interface that will abstract our get post batch methods. Effectively, IHTTP client, and this will be our contract to Graph API. Then we will very quickly create an adapter from HTTP client, or actually AAD, HTTP client provided by SharePoint framework, and we will map uh, certain functions to our IHTTP client implementation. And finally, we will implement a very nice uh, HTTP client that will aggregate our requests put it on some queue, and every few milliseconds or a few hundred milliseconds, it will get everything on the queue, batch it together, send, and resolve the promises associated with the requests. I believe that makes sense. I cannot see anyone nodding or not. I believe you are nodding uh, and sharing my, my approach to this. So to show you how it looks like, here we have very simple web part. We have two users, one is myself, Marcin. You can see that I am available, and this is my photo. And here is my test manager, which is not available and has no photo. Just to see what will happen is, as you can see, there is actually only one batch request, which called the endpoints we needed. So it's me, meme, presence, photo, manager, manager, photo, and manager, presence. The big question, how did we accomplish that? Let's dive into the code. I promised you we will see a, a IHTTP client, which is a very simple interface. Uh, if you wonder why not use the contract provided by Microsoft with SPHTP client, HTTP client, and AAD HTTP client. Answer is very simple. I don't want to use the configuration object. Uh, so, and this is much more similar to Fetch API. So this is why uh, I decided to implement it like this. We have two implementations of the client, as I mentioned. The first one is very simple only AAD HTTP client, and we, when we are calling get, we are effectively just, uh, call, just calling get from the HTTP client provided, provided by SharePoint. We are only adding few headers, for example, for consistency level. If you are not too familiar with graph, this is very, very important header. I highly recommend uh, using that. Uh, for post, same thing, patch, put, no uh, no magic there. When it comes to batching itself, we have this batch graph client. And for batch uh, graph client, I opted for composition, which you can see here. If you wonder why composition, I like composition because effectively this is inheritance with whatever base class you want. So very nice. What is happening? 
when we are calling get, we are actually returning new promise that will be resolved when we create get batch request. What's happening in get batch request? We are if there is no batch, so we have no requests uh, queued. We setting a timeout and we are uh, in a timeout callback. We will call generate batch and batch wait time is effectively number of milliseconds. We will wait for uh, to aggregate our uh, our calls. If there is already a, a batch, we will see if there is a batch for the same URL or not. If there is for the same URL, we will push new promise. If not, we will just add a new, new URL with new promise. So effectively what we are doing here is we are establishing one-to-one -one reference between the promise or the call from the code and batch that we will soon resolve. Then after a few milliseconds, we will call this generate batch. As I said, generate batch will somewhere here get our registered promises. We will split it uh, to max acceptable batch length, which if I remember correctly is 15. So you can have maximum 15 numbers of different requests in one batch. So we will create batches of uh, max number of 15. Get sub map, it's effectively we will get only the 15 uh, promises we registered. Then we will create our batch handler and we will execute batch. What is batch handler? Nothing too difficult. Our batch handler just gets the registered promises, gets the URL from each promise and builds somewhere here. Uh, somewhere. It builds somewhere. Uh, batch body. Oh, I believe that's it. Map request URL. Once we build the uh, build the body, we execute request and we process the batch response. You can see here that we are uh, checking the version because there is separate batch for V1 and separate batch for V2. If you call some endpoint, for example, me endpoint in beta version, you may call it because it uh, it gets some more data. You cannot batch beta version endpoint in V1 batch. This is why uh, we have two, two, uh, two batches, one for beta, one for, uh, one for V1. Request batch, we will have our response, and then we will just process response. Process, this, process response works very easily. Uh, what it does, it, it finds the response associated with URL of registered promise. If it's got throttled, it it will try again. If not, it will just resolve the promise we had in uh, we had stored in in the map. So that's it. Now the the big question is how you can use it. Let's check our uh, auto batching web part sample. First of all, we get the graph client using AAD HTTP client factory. Again, if you wonder, Martin, why wouldn't you just use uh, MS graph client? Uh, because I like the fetch API a little bit more. I believe it's more, uh, more let's say, consistent. Uh, then we are creating new batch graph client, and this is the client we will use in our auto batching sample. Let's check out how. We have one user card in user two or two user card. We provide graph client and the user query we want to use. And finally the user card. And that's what we're looking for. We are resolving three promises at all with very simple API because we just call get whole batching is happening underneath. So it looks like we have three different requests, but under the hood, they are batched into one. We resolve them all 
and we are uh, rendering Persa object from Fluent UI with user data pre presence and of course photo. Uh, now for the I believe last part, something I'm big fan of unit tests because as you may imagine due to the number of requests set uh, set timeout literary operations there is a lot of logic we should be able to test so how we can test something like this with just of course so here let's say we want to test very simple batch request we will create a simple mock for base client create batch request based on this client note that here i will say okay the only response that this base, base client will have is a response from post that will have a, a specific id and or the second request here yeah? this is batch for the request one and the request two we call it awaiting it and we can very easily check that oh actually yes i i executed the post request with uh, with batch i returned test user for me and test group id for my group and there are a few other tests which help you out for example with testing the throttling or something like that i will not go too much into details here uh, I highly encourage you to download the sample, play around with this, and uh, optimally give me some feedback. And finally, because I know the web parts are now passé, you can use the same thing in uh, adaptive cards as well. Here you, you, you see a very simple adaptive card, my name, my presence, my photo. Uh, again, in the same solution, uh, I believe adaptive card extension, that's it. We initialize it in all effectively the same way. We are getting the client from AADHT factory for the graph. We are using the same batch client and we just set to our this time adaptive card state, user, user presence, and photo. Everything, everything is batched together and effectively there is only one request to graph. I would say in adaptive cards, uh, or in adaptive cards in general, that's much more important than in web parts because uh, you can get throttled. I believe if you have 15 consecutive uh, requests to graph, about 15 or nine, something like this, it's not a big, big damper, uh, you will get throttled by graph. So, uh, so especially on adaptive cards, when you still don't have that nice async option or async uh, opportunity to get card details, you have to load everything at once. Batching is so much important uh, to avoid throttling. And I believe that's all from my side. I hope you enjoyed it as, uh, as much as I did. I see a comment complexity uh, 95. Uh, yes, but I believe this is only because I went through this so fast. Uh, as I said, I highly encourage you to check it out on your own. Uh, I've even been told it works quite well with uh, React Native. Uh, so it's, I would say the implementation is quite cross-platform. 43. So yes, I believe that's it from my side. It was a pleasure. Have a great day and see you soon. Awesome. Thanks so stuff, Marcin. Really cool pattern there with the auto batching uh, and uh, definitely uh, the performance implications are, are uh, big uh, with batching these requests. So encourage folks to kind of check out uh, that sample and those patterns and, and see how you can best incorporate them into your applications. Mm -hmm.